Hi, I'm Griff Batch, and welcome to this new series on creating cloud multiplayer games in Scratch. I really love cloud games. For me, there's nothing quite like actually seeing other players playing in your own Scratch game. In the background here, you can see one of my most successful cloud projects in action. This is, of course, my Slither.io port featuring up to eight players with drop-in and out gameplay. Behind the scenes, we have a game host negotiation, auto disconnection, timeouts, forward prediction of player positions to reduce latency, and far more. But fear not, we are going to start simple and build things up over the course of the next few videos. Before we begin, can I just bring your attention to the fact that to create and play cloud games in Scratch, you need to have full Scratcher status. You can check this out on your profile here. If you are still a new Scratcher, then I'm really sorry but you'll have to do a little more scratching before you can join in with this tutorial. Right, let's go. Cloud Variable Basics. Let's start by creating our first cloud variable. Simply click the Make Variable button as normal, give it a name, I've chosen P1X, this stands for Player 1X, and tick the Cloud Variable box before pressing OK. We get a warning about cloud variables popping up. Just dismiss that. It's just letting us know that cloud variables can only store numbers, not letters and words. We'll talk about that in the next video. And there it is, our new cloud variable. But what does it do? Well, simply put, if we change the value of this variable in our project, then any other scratcher playing your project will see the variable change in their game too. The value is stored in the cloud, the internet, for everyone to share. To be able to show you this in action, I need to be editing a shared project. I'll split my screen in half. The left side I shall log in as Griffpatch Tutor and the right I shall log in on my main Griffpatch account. I just need to make sure my left side project is saved and that the right one is reloaded to bring in the latest changes. Now when I change the value of the cloud variable on the left by clicking the change variable block to run it, you can see that the right hand project also changes value. This is cloud variables in action. Right, let's make this a little more fun. Add another cloud variable, P1Y, and tick the cloud variable box and create one last variable, this time not a cloud variable, naming it player. So when the green flag is clicked, let's set the player variable to zero. At the beginning of the game, we don't want to be player one yet. To allow the player to set themselves as player one, we add a when key pressed hat block, choosing the number one key, and set the player to one. Now back to the green flag block stack. We add a forever loop, this is our game loop, and within that, an if statement that runs when player is equal to one. The idea is that when we have become player one, we want to record our mouse position for the other players to see on their screens. So set the two cloud variables, P1X and Y, to mouse X and mouse Y. Finally, under the if block, but still within the forever loop, add a go to XY that positions the sprite at P1X and P1Y, the position of player one's mouse. So let's give this a try. I'll switch back to having my two web browsers open side by side. And here we go. Click the green flag on both sides. Now without pressing the one key, nothing happens as both players are still player zero, not playing. But on the left hand side now, I press the one key and you can see that the player variable has changed to a one and the cat is now following my mouse. What's more, on the right side, we are able to see player one's cat moving too almost mimicking the left-hand cat. This is really exciting to see in action, but I have to say, it can be a little bit of a letdown at first because, as you can see, the movement of the right-hand sprite is anything but smooth. So why is this? Let me slow this down for you. Well, although we are changing the value of both the X and Y cloud variables very fast, the cloud servers that transmit these values to other projects only allow one variable change every tenth of a second. In our case, either the X or the Y one, but not both at once. So the position of the sprite moves in steps, sideways, either up or down or left and right, not diagonally because it's only changing either the X or the Y. And these changes come through in drips, like one after the other. So what can be done? Well, the first thing to do is address the fact that we are trying to send two cloud variables at once. So, in the next video, we shall investigate a technique to reduce this to a single cloud update using variable encoding and decoding. But for this video, that's it. So please subscribe, love the video, watch out for part two in a series. It's going to be fun. I'm Griffpatch. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys.